Welcome to Hockenheim and the Nitro Olympics once again hosting the FIM European Drag Bike Racing Championships. Saturday weather didn't really cooperate, so qualifying was a loss, but the Hockenheim ring managed to salvage most of its legendary night show. Bike semi-finals, real tough field here in Germany this weekend. Near side the racetrack, Martin Newbery. Great to see Martin advancing some rounds with this bike. Running some personal best numbers this weekend, but he's got a really big task in front of him. Far side of the racetrack on the Euroil Buell, the only Buell made it into competition this weekend. Gert Jan Lesur from the Netherlands. So this replacing the final, both the way almost dead even, and they're virtually dead even at half track as well. Can Martin Newby pull off an upset? Unfortunately, not quite for him. 7.15 was the win for Gert Jan Lesur, but an absolutely great 7.25 for Martin and Sindri Newbury from the UK. Superb side-by-side -side race that one. You can see again in replay as well, they were both welded together all down the racetrack. That's what it's supposed to look like. Gert Jan Lesur will be running for the trophy though. Other side of the ladder, closest to the camera, Lenny Paget again from the UK, going up against Frederick Friedland from Audland, the defending European Pro Stock Bike Champion. Didn't have a great event at Santa Pod, broke lots of stuff and went out in the semis. Dead even off the start line once again, but it looks like the horsepower of the Suzuki in the far lane for Frederick. Indeed, it has got there first. Nicely done for him, 7.10. Going to be getting lane choice for the final against Gert Jan Lesur. That was another really, really good close side-by-side -side race in Pro Stop Bike, but you can see that pretty much by the time they went past 60 foot, Frederick Friedland actually had that one sewn up. It will be him and Gert Yang Lesur, which it was all season last season, again in the final for the Pro Stock Bike Trophy. On with the Super Twins. Coming up, we have one by run and one side by side race. We're going to see the by run first, but this is worth watching on its own. From Finland. Boy, have we missed him, and it's so good that he's back. Samu Kampainen. Won the main event at Sandspod Raceway, set low ET here over the weekend in Hockenheim. He's been 6.5 more times than I care to count. Still looking for that 6.4 second timing ticket. Is he going to go for it on the by run? Well, I think the answer is definitely yes. Look at that. Look where he puts the front wheel down. Just there where all that smoke comes off. And was it worth it as well? Samu finally goes 6.49, 342 kilometers an hour. Watch this bike fly all the way down to almost the finish line. Comes down around about a thousand foot. So Samu is waiting in the final with his quickest ever run. And he's going to be taking on one of these two. Both bikes are from the Netherlands, not both riders are, though. No. Closest to the camera. European champ in this class a couple of years back. That's Martin de Haas with the Haas brothers' nitro twin taking on Ronnie Orson. Now, Ronnie's from Norway. The bike he's on is from the Netherlands, owned by the Pels family, sponsored by Zodiac. One very quick machine. It's a little bit different as well. Runs a smaller capacity engine, but has a blower sitting on top of it as well. 
Now, Ronnie has been known to pull out some fantastic runs, but it's not going to happen this time. Martin de Haas, good run for him. Problems for Ronnie that time round, unfortunately. 6.81 takes the win for the de Haas brothers, and Ronnie uh, unfortunately coasts across with an eight second pass. The bike was going great guns, but it was obviously hurting itself a little bit before that because. Martin was way out in front. You can see that the pipes go, well, first of all, sort of wet. You can see a flash of flame and then a big, big cloud of smoke. And that's unfortunately going to be expensive when they get that apart. So your super twin final, Samu Kampainen from Finland and Martin de Haas from the Netherlands. Top fuel bike. Semi-final round closest to the camera is the man who would be king and the man who is king. That's why he's called Ian King. Indeed he is. On the Gulf Oils Puma top fuel machine, one of the quickest and fastest bikes of this particular breed anywhere on the planet. Sponsored by Gulf Oils, the team pushing him back. They're very, very capable. Um, they've been doing this for a long time. They really know what they're doing and they're so tough to beat. Talking of tough to beat, it's going to be Stu Crane. Sponsored by MPM, out of the warp speed engineering team on the far side of the racetrack with the funny bike, going to be trying to take out Ian King. It's a very, very big task for him to do that, especially when Ian's on a complete flyer. He does actually get on and off the throttle a couple of times but almost cruises through to a 6.30 at a slowing 328 kilometers an hour. Stu Crane gave it a good try with a 7.2, just wasn't enough to take out the Gulf Oils bike. You can see Ian get off the throttle around about now, see the flame go down and come back on again, but he will be in another top fuel bike final. See it from the top end again. Anyone thinks these bikes are easy to ride and just go in a straight line, obviously he's never watched one, is all I can say. So, other side of the ladder. Two top fuel machines squaring off this time round. Rene van der Berg near side the racetrack. Another Ural bike from the Netherlands. This time the top fuel machine. Very, very cool, futuristic looking bike. As is Rene underneath that helmet, honestly. Takes on Rickard Gustafsson from Sweden. Now, Rickard, up until this season, has run the world's quickest funny bike in competition, which has been down in the 6.3s. On and off over the past few years, he's been building an absolute state-of-the-art top fuel bike, and that is it on the far side of the racetrack. To say he's taken to it like a duck to water is a bit of an understatement. Ricard loves riding this bike. All the settings on it, everything about it is really low, I think is probably the polite way of putting it. He's just trying to take it easy. He took it so easy in round one, he ran a 6.02. So... Ricard will be gunning for the five second zone sometime soon, if not in this race against Rene van der Berg. So, Ian King waits in the final. Whoever takes him on is going to be a very fierce competitor indeed. So, they nudge forward into stage. They're both there. And they wait for the lights to run. Wow, it's a whole shot for Rene van der Berg. Bucking all over the place and a terrific run for Rene. By far his quickest elapsed time as well. Unbelievable. He went 6.16 on that run. Knocks another tenth off his personal best. Ricard with problems that time round. 374 kilometres an hour as well. You can see Rene drifting over towards the wall, but he definitely had hold of it that time round. So, Super Streak Bike semi-finals. Closest to us on the white machine from the UK, Rick Stubbins. Been doing a lot of travelling this summer, has Rick, and very successfully as well. He's taking on Alan Jensen in this semi-final heat in Germany. Super Streak Bike Cup goes all round Europe. Very successful it is as well. The racing is utterly fantastic. Let's see what Alan Jensen can do against the uh, very, very low seven-second Pro Street booster of Rick Stubbins. 
Well, it looks like Allen got the whole shot there, but Rick's oh, already passed him by 60 foot and away in the distance. And quite away in the distance as well. 7.12, 326 kilometers an hour in English. Just a smidge over 200 miles an hour on a street tired bike. Absolutely fabulous stuff. So it will be the UK on one side of the ladder in the final four super street bike. On the other side of the ladder, will it be an all UK final? We're about to find out. The man in the far lane though, Satiris to Sikris is going to be the guy trying to stop Gary Bow, but stopping Gary Bow so far this weekend has been a well it's been tough let's put it that way Gary has been in the low sevens he's been over 340 kilometers an hour with that bike which is a massive speed for a street bike Tosa Kiris on the far side they're both away together it looks like he might be in front no there comes the big horsepower from Gary Bow's bike blast through to another 7.06 328 to a lose out 752 not bad at all though from the man from Greece on the far side of the racetrack but that was all about Gary Bow and it will be Gary Bow against Rick Stubbins in the final of Super Street Bike an all UK affair And you can see Gary's son's pretty happy about it too. Join us again after the break for all of the finals. Welcome back to Hockenheim and the FIM Drag Bike Championships with a little bit extra on the side. If you've never seen this before, that bike on the far side of the racetrack, this is an exhibition vehicle, it's not a race bike. This is Eric Tabal from Cannes in the south of France. This is a rocket bike. Yes, you heard that right, it's a rocket bike. It has a booster either side of the rear wheel, has rocket tanks underneath it, it's the quickest and fastest thing on two wheels in the world. There is only one of them, but at the same time, there's probably very good reason for that. So, Eric gives the thumbs up, he rolls it into stage, it's very, very quiet until he presses the button and all of the thrust comes out the back of that machine. Here we go. Now when you say goes like a rocket, now you know what it means. Eric blasts through to a 5.44 424 kilometers an hour. Yes, you heard that right, 424 kilometers an hour. What a machine. How he rides that thing, I don't know, because it did get a bit of a wobble on towards the top end. You can see he just manages to keep it away from the center line blocks, but uh, Eric Tabal and the rocket bike, a great fan favorite. Finally, an FIM Pro Stock bike, Gertland Nassur, near side of the racetrack, the Ural Buell from the Netherlands. Got to the final at Santa Pod, was beaten by Alex Hope. Now, Alex got knocked out um, in round one here in Germany, so his championship dance is dented quite considerably. A man looking to uh, take back some impetus in that championship chase, though, is on the far side, Frederick Fredland, the player monk's friend Suzuki from Orland. In the middle of the Baltic Sea. Well, absolutely dead even all the way down the track, but at the stripe, which is the most important thing, Gert Jan Monsieur takes a terrific win in Pro Stop Bike. 7.06, the quickest he's ever been. Frederick Fredlund with a very valiant 7.19. 
I think he wouldn't have cared about the ET if he'd have actually got the event win, most importantly for him. So watch again in replay. It was Fred actually away from the start line first. That normally spells uh, the end for whoever's on the other side of the racetrack. This time, though, Gert Jan had the horsepower to come around him on the top end. So Gert Jan also leads with a pretty sizable points advantage going into the last round at Santa Pod. And here is that points table. Freddie hasn't had it all his own way this year and he'll need to pull something special out of the bag at the final round if he wants to catch the Dutchman and keep his crown. Super Twin Bikes and there has only been one winner so far this year and that's the man in the far lane, Samu Kampainen from Finland with the Skull Racing V60 Twin. Both performing the big smoky burnout. Both of these bikes are normally aspirated, which is uh, very difficult to get nitro to burn in an unsupercharged engine. But these guys do it very, very well indeed. Martin de Haas, champ a couple of years ago. Really looking for big things again in 2016, trying to get the bike quicker and quicker down in the 6.5s to keep pace with Samu, who is now down in the 6.4s. Well, Martin gets a whole shot off the start line, wheels up all the way down. I think they're looking at each other with the wheels in the air, but it's Samu by a couple of bike lengths that blasts through the finish line first and takes the win with a 6.51 to a 6.74. Those guys are unbelievable. Watch again in replay. You can see them both hike the front wheel up, and it doesn't come down for either of them. There you go. You can see the puff of smoke from Samu's bike. He goes into the last round at Santa Pod with a sizable points lead as well in Super Twin. Samu with what looks like a very strong lead as we head off to the final round, but it doesn't take much to turn things on their head on the quarter mile as we've seen already today. OK, we're on to Top Fuel Bike, and due to a problem with the start line system in the semi-final we saw earlier between Ricard Gustafsson and Renaud van der Berg, who you see there, the officials ordered a rerun. When the rerun was actually run, unfortunately, Ricard couldn't make it in time. So, Renaud actually got a by run, and as we've seen a couple of times through the coverage of Hockenheim, all he had to do was stage and take the green light. So, that was effectively the rerun of the semi final. The result was kind of the same with Renaud getting the win. He will now be in the final against. Ian King. So Ian King's already there. Rene very happy indeed to be in the final of Top Fuel Bike. I think it may be his first Top Fuel Bike final in FIM competition. But before we get to see that, it's Super Street Bike Final. Two guys from the UK, near side the racetrack, Gary Bow, far side Rick Stubbins. This could be one hell of a race. They've both been in the low sevens. Gary has set a new speed record at over 340 kilometers an hour this weekend in Super Street Bike. That's his son out the front who does all the tuning. Both these bikes very, very evenly matched indeed. This could be all won and lost on the tree. So both stage lights are lit. And they go. Now it looked like Rich Stone's got a slight hold shot. It looks like he's ahead as well actually, but problems for him at half track. And it's Gary Bow that blasts all the way through to the event win in Super Street Bike. Well, congratulations to him and the whole team. It was a, such a tough field in Super Street Bike. There was a massive entry, qualified for a 16-bike field. And that final round race there was won by the guy from England. So, you can see Rick Stubbins get out of the throttle. Gary Bow takes a very well-deserved win. Gary Bow boosts himself into contention with that win and the street bikes head to the end of the season with a four-way fight on their hands. One more race to go and it's the top fuel bike final. Ian King against Rene Vanderberg. Now they fired the bikes up there but unfortunately one of the blocks had come dislodged at the top end so the crew here in Germany, ran out, 
replace the block as quickly as they possibly could while Ian and Rene actually waited back behind the start line with the block then in place. They fired the bikes up and brought them forward for the last final of the day in the bike classes. So Rene from the Netherlands and Ural never won an FIM round in top fuel bike before against Ian King who's won just about well, most of them really to be brutally honest with you he's uh, almost unbeatable in top fuel bike competition which is very very surprising when you consider that these bikes are so temperamental even at the best of times he's got some serious competition though now both with Rene down in the low sixes we've had regular six zeros now from Ricard Gustafs and he's not far away from the fires and neither is Rene so the golf all team taking on the euro all team would it be the uk or the netherlands where well, looks like ian king's got a problem he's actually shut the bike off he's actually telling the officials to, for rene to go ahead and take a bye run so ian king is not going to make the line for this run it'll be rene taking a bye run and his first ever win in fim top fuel bike competition he nails it anyway, the bike gets a little bit out of shape, but he backs out of it as it moves towards the wall. <laughs> That's going to be one and very happy young man from the Netherlands. You can see he's already celebrating, even before he's got the bike stopped and dragged it away from the wall. Watching the replays, you can see that Vandenberg was a happy bunny all the way down the quarter. What he probably hasn't worked out at any point is that this win lifts him to joint second spot in the points table and the normally untouchable Ian King is actually within touching distance heading off to the final round. 44 points is all he has in hand now so both Rene and Ricard Gustafsson will set off to Santa Pop with their very best game face on hand and we could be seeing yet another big showdown. The Top Fuel brings the weekend to a close as ever. Well done to all who managed to ride around the weather and still put on a show. See you next time out.